Hey, what's up everybody? This is Kimberly and I'm in the marketing department here at Paul C. Buff Incorporated and today I'm going to talk to you about our Einstein and the features that make it one of our top selling flash units. Some of these features include a huge nine stop power range and this is perfect for the photographer who may go outside one day and try to overpower the sun and then come indoors the next day to shoot a portrait at a wide open aperture. Another feature of the Einstein unit is its color consistency. Many flash units on the market, when you reduce the output from full power to the lowest output, will shift about 400 degrees Kelvin. The Einstein, regardless of where you have the output, will not shift more than 50 degrees. And finally, the action mode on the Einstein allows for flash durations as short as 1 13,500th of a second. This is perfect for anyone doing action shots in studio or in any environment where you can control the ambient light without the need for a high speed sync. We'll talk about flash duration a little towards the end of this video, but first we're going to go over the features and functions of the back panel. So let's get started. And as with all of our flash units, the first thing you need to do is remove the shipping cap. The shipping cap is not heat resistant, so if you leave it installed while the unit's turned on, it can melt. To do this, all you need to do is rotate either quick release lever on the side of the faceplate, and that will release the shipping cap. Under the shipping cover, on the faceplate, you'll notice four metal holding fingers. These fingers, as you move the quick release levers, will contract and expand, and this is how you mount soft boxes and reflectors to the front faceplate of the Einstein. You'll also notice that there is a glass diffusion dome that's held onto the faceplate by four pliable metal tabs. Underneath the dome, you'll see your flash tube and your modeling light. The diffusion dome acts as a layer of protection for your flash tube and modeling light, and it diffuses the light slightly. You can choose to shoot with or without it on the unit. For the purpose of this video, however, I'm going to go ahead and put it back on the unit. And now we can go over the back panel. We'll turn on the unit by pressing the power button here, and once the LCD screen loads, you'll notice that it displays nine different parameters. The function button allows you to toggle between these parameters, while the adjust buttons will allow you to change the settings within that parameter. The screen defaults to the flash adjustment parameter here, which will display your watt seconds. If I use the adjust button, I can adjust those settings in a tenth of a stop, or if I hold and press, I can adjust in larger increments. Now we'll use the function button to highlight the modeling light parameter. The modeling light parameter displays your modeling light in watts and can be adjusted the exact same way that the flash output is adjusted, moving in tenth stops, or if you hold and press, larger increments. Next, you'll notice the model setting parameter. Currently, there is an icon with a bulb and a circular arrow in it, meaning that you can adjust the modeling light output separately from the flash output. To change this, we'll use the function button and toggle down to that setting and use adjust to change it to off, full power, or track, which means it will track with the flash output. The next parameter is for your recycle indicator. Currently you'll notice it says ready and off and it's highlighted in green. Green meaning that it's ready to fire. If I want to change this, just use the function to toggle over to it. If you see a music note and a bulb, this means you'll get both an audible indicator and a visual indicator. You can also have it so that you have just a visual indicator, which is noted by the light bulb icon. Or you can have just an audible indicator, which is noted by the music note. Or you can turn it off altogether. The next parameter you'll see has two down angled arrows in it. And this parameter is where you turn on and off the optical slave eye, which is located here on the top of the unit. Unlike the alien bees or white lightning, where you disable the slave eye by plugging something into the sink jack, on the Einstein, it's actually disabled through the back panel. So to do that, you'll use the function button to toggle down, and then just use the adjust button to turn it off or turn it on. The next parameter you'll see is where we're going to change between color and action mode. And once again, when you're in color mode, that's where the color temperature of the unit will not shift more than 50 degrees regardless of where you have the flash output set. And of course, if it's in action mode, that's where you get the really short flash durations.
The final two parameters located here are for when you're using our CyberSync wireless system. Unlike the Alien Bees and White Lightning where you plug in a remote to the sync jack on the back, the Einstein actually has a transceiver receptacle located here on the top. And this is where our CyberSync transceiver will plug in. Now that we have the transceiver installed in the unit, you're able to set both your channel and your frequency from the back panel of the unit. You'll only have to use both channel and frequency when you're using our Cyber Commander. If you're using just the basic CyberSync trigger transmitter too, you just have to set the frequency. As mentioned earlier, we're going to briefly discuss flash duration. Flash duration and high speed sync are not the same thing. Basically, the easiest way to describe flash duration is even though your flash looks like it goes on and off really fast, there's actually a burn off time to that. And that is what flash duration is, and it's also really important for stopping action. In an upcoming Buff Basics video, we're going to show you how to utilize flash duration to stop action, as well as some alternatives to get around high speed sync. I hope you found this video helpful, but if you have any additional questions, please feel free to call our customer service at 1-800-443-5542. They're available Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time. You can also shoot an email at info at paulcbuff.com. And if you'd like to follow us on social media, be sure to check out the links below. And if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.